I think that opening this store and getting on Google is like the best thing I've ever done for my business. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Sean with Airmore Coast Digitizing. I digitize home movies here in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, we do high 8, digital 8, mini DV, Betamax, VHS, just all kinds of tapes from all kinds of different cameras. We do uh, 8 millimeter and Super 8 film here as well. And we can do Super 8 and 8 millimeter sound film. So if you have that stuff, give us a call. Anyways, just a, a video of me working today. I've got a couple orders that came in yesterday that I'm going to go ahead and knock out. They're pretty small. One of them is just a VHS job here and I've gone through them. They don't look moldy at all. So I'm hoping that this is going to be pretty straightforward. And then the other order here is just some eight millimeter film. So we'll be able to do these at the same time. We'll do one over here on the film table and we'll do the others with all the players we have here. Check this thing out. Sony has come a long way. It's definitely not something that I typically have at my office. Um, this is my uh, camera for my other job, but it is a Sony FX6. Uh, it's got a Canon 16 to 35 2.8 L series lens on it with a speed booster, or sorry, a Metabones. This thing is a, it's been a great camera. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, bring it up to the shop today because I have a shoot a little later. So I'm just gonna put this out of the way. Check this out. I got this thing working. It's a um, eight millimeter sound projector here. Check this out. So first things first, it's time to label. I already inspected the tapes. I always inspect the tapes when the customer comes in. That way, if we notice anything, we can notice it together and I'm not just, you know, them having to question whether or not I'm making things up. So looking at these tapes, they all look just like that. There's a little bit of dirt on there, but I'm hoping that these don't have too much of a problem. But we're gonna go ahead and lay them all out and label them real quick. If we can, we'll try to put them in some type of order, but it doesn't look like there's any dates on here. So there's really no way to really get the order down. We've got 1992, 91, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 tapes. Let's go on here, put the sticker. This job's gonna be green. We'll make the other one blue. That way we don't get things mixed up, but there's no real way to get things mixed up when one's film and one's tape, so. And you can see here, all these tapes have these tabs. You can still record over these tapes right now, but if you pop out this tab right here, then you can no longer record on the tape. So after I label all these, I'll probably go through and pop all those tabs off real quick. I don't know if you guys have been following along or not, but the last job I did was, it was a good paying job, but it was just all moldy tapes. And I mean, it wasn't the customer's fault. They weren't their tapes. It was their parents' tapes. And, and there was a natural disaster that caused the issue. But man, it is nice to see some tapes that I can just not have to deal with mold on. And I'm saying that like, these aren't gonna be a problem, but there's still potential. I've got a customer that's supposed to be showing up here at 11. So that's 30 minutes. We got all these labeled. We'll start, we got seven machines we can use. That one's already pre-rewound. Rewound. Oh wow, they must have had a VCR that were on their tapes the last time they played them. Wow, needs to be around. So we got enough here to start. These back in here. But I think what we should do first is now that we have these ready, then I'll just do what I normally do. I'm 
And you'll see if this goes well, then this job will go by fairly quick. So before we get started on the tapes, we're gonna get started on film. So this is the Kodak Reels um, kind of slide scanning system here. And I'm gonna show you guys how I use the Kodak Reels. I feel like I've, I've been able to get this thing to work really good. Um, the only problems I've ever had is like, if someone shoots at 24 frames per second on their old eight millimeter camera, then this is gonna build it out at 18 frames per second. So you're gonna have kind of a slow motion clip, but that's pretty easy to go into Final Cut Pro and adjust the speed on it. It ends up looking pretty good here. I've tried a bunch of different scanners and you know, I just had problems with all of them until I got this one, these ones. And these work pretty good. I, I mean, if you want to do this yourself at home, you definitely can. Um, but if you don't want to waste the time, you don't want to spend the money on the, the gear and you don't want to deal with it, um, I'll do it for you. But that's pretty much what I tell every customer. It's like, hey, you could go out, you could buy this kit and you could do this yourself. Um, I just have three of them back there. So if you want to get it done quickly and I'll do the editing and I'll organize it really well for you. And you know, I'll give them a fair price on it. It's just because it takes time. So for each one of these, I go in and I, you have an SD card in the back. You have to use SD cards that are smaller than 32 gigabytes or it'll pretend like it's working, but it won't actually save. So once, once we're there, we go to capture. What I like to do is like to open the little gate here, give it a little blow, take my microfiber, wipe down on it. And most of the dust on these film reels is gonna be on the leader and everything before that. So what I like to do is wipe the leader down all the way to the film right there. And then I'll slide my leader in. And if the leader's a little crooked, I'll use a pair of scissors and cut it straight. But I just slide it in like this so it's nice and clean. If you don't have it flat against the gate, then the, the uh, footage will show up out of focus. So you get it flat against the gate there, close it down. And then what I like about this one versus like the Wolverine and the other ones, is you can just slide it through. On the Wolverine, it's gonna get caught up on a little mechanism that turns the, the film. So once I do that, I feed it through the take up reel, wrap it around a couple times so it's tight enough. And then I go ahead and thread it through. If you don't put this through the leader through the <clears throat> little wrap around right here, it'll tug a little tight on the film and it'll be off center for the scan. But you can just kind of turn this and keep an eye. I'm not seeing any dust laying on the, the gate there. So we're looking pretty good. And then we're gonna look at our first image. And it looks like this is definitely not um, an ideal color temperature. So first thing I'll do is I'll turn it off, see if that changes our color temp for us. And typically as it gets moving, if it has a color temperature issue, it'll fix machine. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So now that that one's set up, that's gonna take 30 minutes to go. We'll go to the next one. Think about the Kodak reels too. It, it's really easy on film and there's really not a lot, to, there's really not a lot that can go wrong as far as like tearing the film up. So if you do this and then you wanna put it through a projector and you tear it up, then there's that. For the most part, this is, the customers have been really happy with this, with the results I'm getting from this. And, you know, sometimes I have to go in and, and do a little editing at the end, and, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna happen no matter how you transfer these. And yeah, my workflow is a little slow, but it's getting the job done and I'm not complaining, it's fairly easy. So I'll do my wipe down. See how the leader's kind of bent there? And I could have added a leader to that one, guys, but I've got a box full of them here. I just didn't want to. I didn't feel like it. It's not necessary. So I'll cut that off. Now we have a nice, easy piece of leader to send through the gate here. So we'll go into capture. We'll thread into the gate. Nice and flat. If that's not nice and flat, guys, if it's not threaded through there perfectly, 
it will be too far away from the camera and it will be out of focus. All right, so now we'll grab our rag here, our microfiber cloth, and we'll wipe down everything at the beginning. And we'll pull until we see an image. So all three of these are uh, transferring now. So while that's going on, I'll just keep an eye on that while it's in the background. I, at this point, I can hear it. If, if I don't hear it sound exactly like that, I know something's wrong, I'll walk over there and check it out. Hey, just one second. Are you Sean? That's right. Okay. All right, so that customer just dropped off a bunch of VHS tapes and Hi8 tapes here. And she came over for two hours from Panama City. Cool. Getting the word out, guys. Two hour drive. Let's back to it. What a not wasted time, but definitely wasted time for what we got going on here. There it goes. I'm starting these tapes. I hope they finish before I have to go. I have to go uh, film some stuff for this festival that's happening in town. I freaking love using Back to the Future as my tester tape, guys. It is, it is so fun to like slowly watch a movie in like four or five second increments throughout the day. I love that. That's why I always choose different tester tapes. Because by the end of the day on a big job, you've, you've watched the whole movie in like a couple second increments. Highway to the danger zone. Stuck in my head. All right, video, audio, okay, continue. We're gonna go zero, zero. What is this one? Zero. No dates. Oh, I wish we would do more dates. All right, we're gonna put our tester in. Let's see. That's the power of love. Oh, I hooked up. That's the power of love. Oh, no signal, guys. No signal. Oh, this head is dirty. That's not what you want. You want to see a picture. So, I just... These tapes... None of these VCRs have screwed on so I can just pop everything off easily like that oh god Let's see that's the power of love let's see how dirty this thing is oh yeah she's definitely got something on it doesn't look like it's coming off the head though it's coming off the drum A little dirty. That's the power of love. All right. That looks pretty good. Doesn't take much, guys. It wasn't very dirty, but it was enough to make it run blank, blue screen. So now that we did that, get a customer tip in. Press play. Get ready to start recording. I don't press record until I see image. Okay. So this is another digitizing of the film that I'm working on over there, which I need to flip over, switch out. There's no audio, it's just burr. All right, that was good to me. I mean, what they did was they played this film on a projector on their wall or projector screen or something and filmed it with a VHS camera. They could have used one of these possibly. VHS camera through here, projector through there. But I feel like you would have better results than that. I really need to get myself set up to do four more. I can do four more at once. So I need to move one, two, three more players there. And maybe one more player here. Maybe I'll get a Mac, a uh, Mac computer for right here. 
like a desktop. Or maybe I'll set up another one. Maybe I'll try to find another one of these. That's what I need to do. I need to find another one of these without a screen. I've been working with a computer store down the road, the Tech Handyman, and they've been uh, helping me with computers, getting some old computers. I've just been buying cheap stuff that has like scratches and stickers on it. Don't need to spend a ton of money on computers. I think the most I've ever spent is $200. I mean, these, this one here and this one here, like I bought this for a lot of money back whenever I was doing a lot of editing, film editing, and it broke, so I decided just to keep using it. The company replaced that one for me because it broke with this one and then it broke again and then i took it to tech handyman and fixed it but let's see what we got here zero zero three but yeah all the other computers they're all under 200 bucks each so one two three four five so a thousand bucks for all that it's not too bad it's real interesting stuff right guys it's kind of a boring video I didn't notice any blind spot before, Beth. It's working, so we'll just send it. Let's see what we got. All right, she's playing. I can hear it. I can't believe I came into work today. I should have just chilled out at the house because I have to do that work tonight with the camera work tonight. But I figured I'd come up here because I knew I had a customer that was going to come in today. That's why I came. So I can meet that customer. I also have one more coming in at one. I think that opening this store and getting on Google is like the best thing I've ever done for my business. I've only been open for less than a month and I've made more money than I made last year. Last year I uh, was also doing a lot of camera work as well. I was out of town a bunch so. I only worked maybe two months last year doing this. But this is uh, full time now, so. I haven't been using this Zenith much. I've got this Panasonic here. I might bring that Panasonic down and I never use it. That, but uh, the car had any blind spot before when I was I just driving. don't know if I like the image that's coming out of this Zenith. Blind I'm a Panasonic guy. I've always liked the Panasonic colors better. But we'll see how this tape looks on it. Yeah, it looks fine. Here's a pretty Florida sunset for you, Ryan. Sounds good, too. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tapes going. I could have another one going, but I left my other laptop at the house. Or did I? I did, okay. Oh, my coffee. Uh, the front's looking pretty good, huh, guys? Uh, I do need to wall it off. I kind of wanted to wall it off so you couldn't see back here from the front. But, I don't know. I like the being able to get the daylight back here so I don't know I'm gonna have to make an adjustment when I get slow but I just don't see us slowing down at all this is called expanding guys <laughs> this is as simple as that you just add another machine to your workflow and then you can get things done faster you can take on more clients and you can make more money because you can only make as much money as you can do in a day. So even if the job is, let's say you get like a four or $5,000 job, it's gonna take you a week to do it. So you can only make 4,000 a week. You can't make 4,000 a day because you can't get 4,000 a day done. That's why you see me adding more computers because the the quicker I get stuff done, the more money I make per day versus per week or per month. And I don't have to work as much. Is your brother, Mom? Yeah. I think it's a major embarrassment having an uncle in prison. We all make mistakes in life, children. God damn it. I know. David, watch your mouth. 
Sounds good. You got a good working VCR now. Let's put the customer's tape. He's talking boat talk already. We're all getting ready. Right, just do a little minor adjustment because I saw a little bit at the bottom there. All right, that's good. Sounds good. When? I've been doing this for probably four years now. Kind of the beginning of COVID is when I kind of started doing it um, for people. But I've been wanting to kind of do a video of like where it started, how it started, how it's going. Um, so I've been going nonstop, guys. Started the film, started the tapes, took care of the customer, came back, finished starting the tapes. Some of the tapes are already done. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna reroute, rewind the film up. 